the Greens. So I'm very glad to be introducing the Deputy Leader of the Greens, Sharia Ali, to, to, to give us his thoughts in response to the Chilcot report. Thank you, Murat, and thank you, the Stop the War Coalition, a vital political campaigning force and tool this century, and long may it continue, but let's hope we don't need it as much as we have been needing it these last few decades. So, we've heard about the establishment, can everybody hear me all right? We've heard about lies and we've heard about leadership. And I just want to touch briefly on these three things. Now, it isn't simply that we've had foisted upon us two and a half million words worthy of the establishment. Two and a half million words to say what we already knew in one word. Liar. It isn't simply that the establishment produced a report telling us things we knew or thought we already knew or suspected and were confirmed. That wasn't what was extraordinary. It was that the establishment said it, and for the first time they had to admit it. For the first time they actually had to come clean on the extraordinary lies which we already knew had been committed. But who is this report about? Is it about the 179, the families of those? Is it about them? Yes, of course it is. Is it about the quarter of a million Iraqis who we killed, in Blair's words, in order to say, yes, it's about them, and count it? Is it about Blair? Yes, but not in the sense he would like it to be. Because for Blair, it was about damage limitation. For Blair, it was about salvaging his reputation. For Blair, even in his apology, it was all about him. How despicable and outrageous his. <laughs> defense of himself. And yes, you may want to argue about did he really lie? I'm not sure he can afford me. I'm quite interested in the therapy of <laughs> fessing up. But let's say that he didn't lie, if by lying we mean asserting contrary to what you believe. Well, there's a very easy way of not having to lie. It's to choose to believe something contrary to that which everybody reasonably minded and right thinking would have believed. So it isn't a question about, did he say as he meant? Yes, he may be sincere, but he's radically self-deceived. It's not a question of, did he, did he say as he found it? Should he have found differently? Was he reasonable in believing as he did when the whole world was telling him you cannot go to war on this false prospectus? So yes, he lied in all the common or garden senses of that term. He knowingly misled, he knowingly withheld, he knowingly led us through a course on the basis of a predetermined intention. And it doesn't matter whether he says he acted in good faith, that isn't even the half of it. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. We don't care for your good intentions or your good faith, Mr. Blair. And when you look at the evil that is done through this institutionalised corruption and hierarchy and false hierarchy, there are a few people who come out good on this. For example, one Robin Cook. What a great person Robin Cook was. One of the few cabinet ministers who had access to the intelligence which was being withheld from all the others. And he said, up with this I cannot put, up with this I will not put. I will not put my name and I will not be a part of this horror. Yes. And now look, what kind of a sick apology we got. Because there are many forms of apology. Compare Blair's apology, a defiant apology, where he's saying in the same breath, if I had that chance again, I would do the same thing because I knew I was right. I believed it. We don't care. We don't get it. We don't care what you believed. You were wrong to believe it. Compare his apology, his defiance, his lack 
of humility. If he really meant what he said, he should be hauling himself before every criminal court in the land and internationally and say, I really do regret and repent. Forgive me, 179 families. Forgive me. That is what I would call a decent apology. And compare his apology with the apology of Jeremy Corbyn. A man who had done nothing wrong, who did everything right, who was proved right. This is a man who apologised on behalf of the Labour Party, and that is genuine leadership. So yes, we do, we do need legal remedy. Because if it wasn't for accountability or even punishment alone, and let's not forget, there is a place for making sure that somebody is punished for their crimes. But it's also the consequences of doing so. And every court is also a part of the establishment. So, a little bit like our intelligence dossier, if they don't give us the answer we want, we'll keep going back to them until they do give us the answer that we want. So the International Criminal Court included have even retracted on their saying misreported sentiments. They are going to look at the inquiry and let's put pressure on them and every other court in the land and internationally to do this right because we need that kind of accountability to make this kind of occurrence even more difficult to happen again. Because when we have those despotic leaders, even in our own country, God forbid, we need to make sure that their focus is on what would happen to them if their hubristic intentions went pear shaped That's the only way to hit them where it hurts. So finally, think again, and I want to touch on what Andrew said about leadership. I want to address all those detractors in the Labour Party, all those backstabbers and frontstabbers. The Hillary Benn, for example. Claiming of Benn. Claiming, sorry. Claiming. Claiming of Corbyn. He is a good and decent man, but he's not a leader. That is the problem. Well, I have an answer to those detractors. Corbyn is a good and decent man, and he is the leader of the Labour Party, and you are the problem.